How to construct a simple dichotomous key. An important part of biology is classification, which is putting things in groups so that we can identify them and know things about them. One way that we can do this is using a tool called a dichotomous key. The word dichotomous literally means dividing something in two, which will make sense in just a moment. In this video, we're going to create together our own dichotomous key. To visualize the idea of what you'll essentially be doing, we can use something called a tree diagram. I want you to picture that you have eight different living things, or organisms. You'd need to figure out what makes them different from each other. Then pick one thing to focus on that separates them into two groups. For example, you might notice that half of them have fur and half do not, so you could split them into two groups accordingly. Your next step is to further split each of these two new groups. Focus on them one at a time though. Within your first new group, you may realise that some lay eggs and some do not, so you can separate them further based on this feature. Again, focus on each of these two new groups one at a time, and how each of these groups can be divided in two again. For example, maybe you could split the first of the two new groups based on whether or not the organism has quills. So the organism that does could be, say, an echidna, and the other could be a platypus. And yes, echidnas and platypuses are monotremes, so they lay eggs. Then you'd just go back to the organisms that don't lay eggs, and choose another feature to separate them. Now you just need to focus on the other side of the tree diagram. Remember those starting animals that didn't have fur? You'd need to look at them and figure out how to split them into two groups. For example, some, but not all of them, might have feathers. If you then focus on the ones that do have feathers, you might notice something like some are colourful and some are not, and split that group based on that feature. Then to finish off, split the last remaining group. Phew, that was a lot. So, um, what was the point of that? Well, imagine you come across an organism and you're not sure what it's called. We could look at its features and use our tree diagram, couldn't we? Say we notice that it doesn't have fur, it does have feathers, and it's colourful. And our tree diagram, or this form of dichotomous key, tells us that it's a rosella. Okay, so that was the overall gist of it, but don't worry if you're not following quite yet. Let's do a proper example. Or pause the video here if you need a brain break first. Okay, so this is our new group of animals or organisms to work with. We have a macaw, a tiger, a snake, a koala, a dog, a kangaroo, a snail, and an alpaca. As well as a tree diagram, which is a visual representation of a dichotomous key, this time we're going to write down yes-no questions at each step, so we can produce a written dichotomous key as well. It may look a little bit tricky right now, but don't worry, we'll do it together as we work through our example. Have a look at our example group of organisms. What do they have in common? What makes them different? What ways can you think of to split them into two groups? You may like to pause the video here to think about or discuss this. This time on our tree diagram, we have some question numbers labelled to guide us when we write our written dichotomous key. You may like to pause the video here to write this down to use as a template when you make your own dichotomous key, or just come back to it later. There's no right or wrong way to split these organisms into two groups, but this is what I came up with for our example. We could pose the question, do they walk on four legs? And we write this down as our first question as part of our written dichotomous key, which I'll write down on the right-hand side of the screen. The organisms that do walk on four legs are the dog, koala, tiger, and the alpaca. And those that don't are the snail, macaw, snake, and kangaroo. To continue working on the written dichotomous key, we need to tell the person trying to identify an organism what to do next. See how the branch of the tree diagram links to question 2 for organisms that do walk on four legs? So we write under question 1, if yes, go to question 2. In contrast, you can see that the branch of the tree diagram for organisms that do not walk on four legs links to question 3. So we write, if no, go to question 3. 
For now, we're just going to focus on the organisms that do walk on four legs. We need to separate our organisms that walk on four legs into two new groups as our next step. One way we can split this group of organisms in two is to ask, do they climb trees? Using their claws, both koalas and tigers have the ability to climb trees. And see how their branch of the tree diagram leads to question four? That means for our written dichotomous key, we can write, if yes, go to question four, under our second question. You wouldn't expect a dog or an alpaca to climb a tree, so they would form the group on the other side of this part of the tree diagram. So under question two in our written dichotomous key, we can also write, if no, go to question five. So how can we distinguish between the koala and the tiger for our fourth question? We could always ask the question, are they indigenous or native to Australia? Obviously the koala is, and the tiger is not. So this time for our written dichotomous key, we can write, if yes, koala, if no, tiger. Then for the last group that needs separating on this side of the dichotomous key, we can ask, are they a herbivore? A herbivore is an organism that only eats a plant-based diet. So the yes branch will lead to the alpaca, and the no branch will lead to the dog. So under question five, we write, if yes, alpaca, if no, dog. Now we need to go back to our group of organisms that don't walk on four legs on the other side of our tree diagram. One way we can split this group in two is to ask, do they have legs? For which we can say yes for the macaw and the kangaroo, and no for the snail and the snake. And for our written dichotomous key, we would write under question three, if yes, go to question six, and if no, go to question seven. We want our sixth question to highlight a difference between a macaw and a kangaroo. So we could ask something like, do they have feathers? What does this mean we write under question six in our written dichotomous key then? You've probably got the hang of it now, and know that we would write, if yes, macaw, if no, kangaroo. Lastly, we just need a question that will distinguish between the snail and the snake. So for question seven, we can ask, do they have a shell? Obviously the snail does. So under question seven, we write, if yes, snail. And because the snake doesn't have a shell, we write, if no, snake. So here is our fully completed written dichotomous key. All I've done is taken our questions and written instructions and put them together in order. Now might be a good time to pause the video and check it, which will go faster with teamwork, by the way. Choose any of our starting organisms, start with question one, and follow the questions and instructions for that organism, and see if it identifies the expected result. Next, we'll look at what to do if you're presenting your dichotomous key as a visual representation or a tree diagram. Rather than writing out the whole question this time, we can use things called annotations, Annotations are a written comment on something. Along each of the branches of the tree diagram, we write just enough that you can tell what the question was asking, and you can use the dichotomous key to identify the organism. Starting at the top, use the organism you chose to check on the written dichotomous key, and make sure the tree diagram version of the dichotomous key also produces the expected result. Now you're ready to try constructing your own dichotomous key. Good luck! Until next time! Stay awesome! Please remember to support this channel by subscribing, and leave this video a like if you liked it. Please comment below if this video was helpful for you, any constructive criticism, ideas or requests for future videos, and share any awesome lesson ideas with our fellow educators.